Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be doing an exciting video and it's a collaboration that we're doing with Wishtrend. Wishtrend TV. <laughs> so because they're huge skincare gurus and experts and they cover a lot of similar things, we thought it'd be a really fun collaboration to do on pores. There's so many things that we can do and products we can use that will help you know, shrink and tighten them. But there's also a lot of little mistakes that we could be making that's actually making them bigger and oilier and causing us to break out. So today we're gonna talk about seven don'ts of what not to do if you want nice, clear, and clean pores. Mm -hmm. And then make sure you head over to Wish Trend later on or now. The description link will be below because they're gonna be mentioning the seven do's on how to thoroughly cleanse your face so that it's clean and you prevent yourself from breaking out. So let's go! Let's go! <laughs> Don't frequently use blotting papers, and this is frequently used. I think if you use it once a day, that should be okay, like yeah. before, you know, after work, or just, you know, midway through the day. This is like if you're constantly using it multiple times a day, every couple of to hours. Like suction out yeah. the oil. Yeah, because it's so satisfying looking at the little, you know, blue Sheet. or whatever color sheet, and it turns all transparent. <laughs> but that actually, the more you take oil off of your face, the more your skin will want to reproduce. It just kind of gets into this cycle where it's just constantly producing yeah. oil. And then it'll just do it's that like forever. It's like almost <laughs> depending on this sheet. But like naturally your face should have oils. Yeah. I get that if you're super shiny just to like dab it down but not consistently use it all the time. And here's a fun little tip. If you guys don't have blotting papers on you, sometimes when desperate times calls for desperate measures, you can use tissue paper. Like uh, separate the plies. Those are really good because it's really thin. And then they're accessible. Mm -hmm. If you're, you know, very desperate. Next, don't forcibly extract blackheads, whiteheads, or pimples. But it's so fun! No, no, it is satisfying. <laughs> But that's actually the difference. Okay, so like we all have those times where we see something and we want to pop it, but it's like kind of not ripe yet. Yeah. It's not ready. And that's the times that we're talking about because there are two major problems that will arise when we do just try to pick at something that's not there yet. So the first one is that you could actually rupture the pimple inside under the skin. So it's kind of like spread the bacteria underneath <laughs> the skin, but on the surface it's still covered. Yeah. So it's inflamed, it's irritated. Ooh and becomes even bigger. And then all the juices and the oils and sebum mix together and become this like huge pimple that could have been easily avoided if you just didn't touch it. But on top of that, every time you do, your fingers and your fingernails, if you don't use an extractor, it can like easily dig into the skin and cause scars. So then you have a scar without actually extracting anything <laughs> because it's just still under the skin. See why we say not to extract them. How many times have you kind of just pressed it upon your nose and it went boop, boop. It's like <laughs> a little then, grain of rice. <laughs> yeah, it just like shoots out and it's firm. I'm ready! Yeah. <laughs> this is a little tip with like blackheads or whiteheads. If you use an extractor, you shouldn't have to push down a lot for it to come out. What you want to do is kind of like wiggle around the opening that you see. No. If you push it down, you know the little like loop? Yeah. That can also indent your skin and then break the skin barrier as well and then still cause you a scar. It's already putting force on it, so if it's ready to come out, it will. Don't over exfoliate. <laughs> By over exfoliating, you're actually irritating the skin much more than it normally should. So your pores will slowly become enlarged and produce more sebum because it's trying to protect itself. And then the more sebum means once again, blocked pores. Basically, there's two types. There's physical and chemical. Mm. So physical is the ones that you should be a little bit aware of in terms of how hard you press, what type of sponge you're using, like what brushes, cloth. sponge, mm. anything that's physically scraping, scraping the skin rubbing, off your face. Yeah. We talk about this all the time. Sometimes if you see that your skin is really dry or it's flaky or there's just dead skin, you want to get rid of it or use like, like some sort of gel peel to like get it all off. Yeah. But that's actually really bad. So the more gentle, but that actually sounds a bit more scary, is chemical exfoliation, which is much more gentle than we like to think because AHAs and all those acids that are in serum forms as well as moisturizers, they actually unstick the glue that holds dead skin together. Moral of the story, be gentle with your skin because it is very precious and don't over exfoliate. Mm. 
Don't let your skin be dry. When you have dry skin, your skin naturally produces more sebum and oil to make it not dry and epically parched. And then that in turn will enlarge your pores because they get clogged. And our skin loses its elasticity, so then it just stays big and then it's just there on our face. And that's what leaves the huge enlarged holes. So just by keeping the skin hydrated, you will let it be more glowy and plump and just all around happy. The skin has different layers and so toners are able to seep into the deeper layers and serums and then you work your way up to like thicker oils and stuff like that but if you just use oils it's actually not able to penetrate down to the deeper layers of your skin so it's actually not fully hydrated even though it might feel like it on the yeah. surface so we're doing a whole video on toners, toners and how that works so it's best to look for toners that are lightweight but also deeply hydrating so one of my favorites is Fresh's deep hydration rose toner, toner. <laughs> with like three roses so there's like rose petals there's rose water, rose oil, and the girls at Wish Trend recommend toners with this ingredient, Centella. With Centella, which is also deeply nourishing. And it's good for reducing dryness and redness to really calm your skin. And another toner I've been loving is Sun and Park's Beauty Water. It's like a cleansing water mixed with a toner, and it is very gentle on your skin, and there's also mild exfoliants. And it is pH balancing, so it helps, again, balance the oil production and the water mm. on your skin. So as for moisturizers, look for something that's fortified with high hydrating ingredients like hyaluronic acid because hyaluronic acid holds and stores and actually attracts water and keeps it in your skin. So it's one of those really moisturizing but gentle ingredients and it's really lightweight. One of my favorite moisturizers is the Ole Henriksen Oil Balance Moisturizer. One. So it's designed specifically to balance oily and dry and keep the pH balance like good. And it has a lot of calming properties as well. So if you guys have actually ever tried this, you wash your face and you get busy doing something and you just don't immediately put stuff on or even like forget altogether. Your skin's like dry, but it's also shiny after mm. 10 minutes. Compared to if you wash your face and then you toned it, it's like much different. It feels different. You're not as shiny when it's toned because it's already been balanced versus your skin is just Raw. pushing out oil <laughs> while dry. So that's what we kind of mean by the feeling of like a balanced skin. For the cooler months, I love Drunk Elephant's Lala Rocho mm. Whipped Cream. It's so nice and thick and moisturizing. It's like velvety, yeah. the cream. And it works for both of us. So I have dehydrated, she has very oily combination skin. Mm. And also for the winter months, sleeping masks are also mm. really good. Mm -hmm. It's like the time for them to shine. And for the summer months, I've been loving Glow Recipes Watermelon Moisturizer because it's filled with hyaluronic acid. Ingredients that block pores. So we've all heard of comedogenic and non-comedogenic, which basically means ingredients that don't block your pores or block your pores. And this one's a little confusing because even though ingredients are designed to be really good and nourishing for your skin, depending on the skin type, it can actually act as a double-edged sword and do worse things for your skin. And with the comedogenic, which is pore clogging, it actually ranges from zero to four. So zero or one, meaning there's like basically no chance it's gonna clog your pores, it's like water. Up until like four, which is really heavy ingredients. So the first one is cocoa butter. And we have this one here, it's pure cocoa butter. And the thing is, it's got a comedogenic level of four, which is pretty high in terms of facial body oils. But the thing is, it's generally used for the body. So people also use it on the under eye because it is so nourishing. And it's actually really good for people with dry, chapped skin, AKA Rowena. <laughs> but I would steer clear of this, especially if you have acne prone or if you have oily skin, because it's just too much. Even though it's all natural, if you use it on the wrong skin type, it does the worst. <laughs> so that's one way you can tell if you put it on and it's still slippery and wet after like five minutes, try not to use it because you will find that your normal oils mix into this like heavy oil and then it's just too much. It's like, help me. Drowning in your own oils. <laughs> yeah. Your skin is like a sponge, so it absorbs everything that it needs and the rest will just kind of sit on top and if there's too much of that suffocating the top of your skin it's like a self-induced breakout so don't do that <laughs> coconut, coconut oil. oil so coconut oil is also a really high comedogenic rating it's of four and kind of along the same reasons it's really heavy although it's all organic and so many skincare lines put organic oil yeah. just using it like by itself right yeah. to like either moisturize take or off your makeup, take off makeup and moisturize 
guys. Yeah, it's like this everything ingredient. Yeah. Just keep in mind that it's also very comedogenic because it is really heavy. So coconut oil is more suitable for really dry skin types rather than sensitive acne prone or combination because it's just too much for the face generally. So personally, I can only use coconut oil in like the depths of winter when it's mm. so cold and my skin is so flaky and it just there's nothing that can do to nourish it. <laughs> I put it on and actually it soaks into my skin. So yeah, if it is the winter, maybe use it more towards nighttime. Yeah. And just so it's like deeply nourishing when you're falling asleep and it can really sink into the yeah. skin without like attracting <laughs> dirt and bacteria outside. Lanolin actually comes from the wax or the oils of sheep. So you know how they're outside and it rains and it's basically waterproof? Yeah. It's that kind of okay. stuff. And then they filter it through a bunch of times so it's really pure because they realized, I think it was the ancient Romans that the sheep farmers actually had the softest hands in comparison to like royalty. Yeah. So they were like, what is Why? going on? <laughs> so that's how they found it. And a lot of people know that lanolin is really pore clogging or comedogenic, but it is less than the cocoa butter and the coconut oil. So for me anyway, those are the three oils that I tend to stay away from because it is too rich. It's too <laughs> nourishing for combo acne prone skin. Foods that are not good for your pores. So anything that's high in sugar content, so cakes, ice cream, donuts, <laughs> all the good things in the world. <laughs> Everything that's delicious <laughs> here. Everything that's high in refined sugar is actually really bad for our pores because refined sugar spikes our insulin, which causes inflammation, which also causes an increase of sebum production in our skin. And that leads to clogged pores, which leads to breakout and acne and all the bad things that we don't want. When sebum increases, it also increases the size of your pores mm. because it can potentially cause more clogged pores. You know how your body has yin and yang? It's got like a cool and a hot. So spicy foods and also like a lot of tropical fruit, deep fried foods. So they're all more on the hotter side. So this can throw your body's balance of that off, which can lead to things like nose bleeds for me. <laughs> Whenever I eat spicy food like chicken wings or burgers, my nose will bleed like or if you're more sensitive, you can break out. But yeah, that's not to say that you can't have it, just have it moderately. Everything in moderation. Kind of like the next one we're gonna talk about, which is alcohol. So we both don't drink. When you drink, it's a diuretic. It makes you thirsty and it makes your skin and all your insides very parched. Epic dehydrated. <laughs> yeah. Like you wake up every morning after like, uh, water. <laughs> it's like SpongeBob and Patrick on yeah. the... <laughs> when your skin is dehydrated, it will start causing your pores to produce more oil because it's like, help me. And, and then like a horrible, dark, endless yeah, cycle. <laughs> yeah, and then it gets clogged and then you get breakouts. So just stay away from alcohol. So basically anything that's high in sugar, refined carbs, fried foods, alcohol, milk, like all of these things are- Oh, dairy. Cheese. Cheese, cheese and cheese milk. Queen. The milk and cheese from the cows actually have hormones in itself. So when your body consumes it, if you're sensitive, once again, this is like my own like thing, <laughs> you will break out. And it's like almost instantaneously for me. The next day after cheese, I'll have like bloop, 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 which is these. So yeah, just make sure you're really conscious about all the things that you're eating because it has much more impact on your skin than I think we normally think about. Next, don't retouch and powder your face too much. So around lunchtime or late afternoon, you start to develop and you see like the shine that birds can see <laughs> from the sky, like especially if it's hot, right? And you just naturally either go for blotting paper or you powder it down and retouch your makeup. But what's actually happening is you're kind of creating this cake layer effect. And so like, you know, you've already lived out half the day and if you've been outside, there's dirt, there's bacteria. And then you're also like patting another layer of powder on top of that and almost like cementing that down, <laughs> which is actually making your pores even huger. Especially I find around here or the forehead, you see it's like breaking away because the oils are under there and you've just put so much powder on. So another thing to also make sure you are aware of is changing that sponge mm. of comp Pack sponges. <laughs> even, <Guilty. laughs> even if you're like, oh, it's just my face, it's my own oils, as long as I don't share it. But actually, no. that cloth is so nest. Yeah. It's like how frequently you should wash your beauty blenders your and sponges and, and all that. Yeah. Just like after every Because just by sitting there, it like infests almost. But yeah, don't 
go towards like the convenience of it and just forget that this is actually causing you a lot of breakout. <laughs> or you can also use beauty water, like mm. the Sun and Park beauty water to wipe off whatever the excess thing is Stuff and is. then put on more products yeah. and moisturizer. So if you are applying powders throughout the day, it's perfectly fine. But just to care for your pores and make sure they're really cleaned at the end of the day, do a really thorough, thorough cleanse. cleanse. <laughs> like double, triple cleanse if yeah. you must. Happy pores, happy life. Okay guys, so that was the seven things to not do for good pores and small, minimized, pretty pores. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to keep them happy, to keep them clean, make sure you're not doing these seven habits. It's like a quick fix, but it's actually not good because you're creating like mm. more problems. Yeah. But if you want to find out the things to do and the correct ways to clean your pores, keep them happy, head over to West Trend TV and they'll be sharing with you guys seven of the do's and the correct ways on how to do that. So we're so excited to be collaborating and we're so excited for you guys to be on your way to clean your face a yeah. little bit better every time <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video bye